Hi all, this is Priya Grace from Microbiology Department. Today's topic is staining and staining reactions. Staining is one of the important technique in microbiology. So all of you will be very interested to see the microorganisms. As we all know, the microorganisms are very small in size and they are colorless. So when seen under the microscope, they are very transparent and hence they have to be colored to be seen under the microscope and that is done by the process called as staining. So let us see now what actually a stain is. Stain is actually a chemical compound which consists of a benzene, chromophore and oxochrome. So to see about this benzene, benzene is actually a colorless organic solvent and chromophore is a chemical group that imparts color to the benzene and this oxochrome is a chemical group that conveys the property of ionization to the chromogen. So now these two are together is called as chromogen and these three components combine together to form stain. Now basically we have seen what a stain is and these stains are of two types and they are acidic and basic. Actually the stains employed in the staining process are of basically two types. One will be the acidic dyes, the other one will be the basic. Now to see about the acidic stain, they are found to be anionic in nature and on ionization they exhibit the negative charge. Since these dyes exhibit the negative charge, they have got the higher affinity for the positive constituents of the cell. So one example for the acidic stain will be negrosin. So now let us see about the basic dyes. So these basic dyes are found to be cationic in nature. On ionization they exhibit the positive charge and they have higher affinity for the negative constituents of the cell like cell membrane, outer cell membrane and also the nucleic acids. So example for the basic dye will be crystal violet. So until now we have seen actually what is a stain and what are the types of stain. So now let us see about the types of staining techniques that is usually done to visualize the microorganisms. So there are basically three types of staining techniques. One will be simple, second one is differential staining. Third one is special staining techniques. So actually the simple staining is one of the very basic step in the staining process. Actually what makes the difference between these three staining is that simple staining is done with a single reagent and in the case of differential staining more than one reagent is being used say for example like three reagents will be used. And in the case of special staining, it is done to visualize the special structures of the bacterial cell like the cell uh, nucleus or might be the flagella. So if you want to visualize the special structures like that, the special staining will be done. So in the case of simple staining, it is usually done with the use of single stain and also it is done to visualize the morphology of the bacterial cell. So what do you mean by morphology? It means you will be able to visualize the size and also the shape of the bacterial cell. So it can be analyzed by means of the simple staining. It is one of the basic staining technique that can be followed to visualize the morphology of the bacterial cell. So in the case of simple staining, the steps involved are, the first step that is involved will be the smear preparation. So what is meant by the smear preparation? Smear preparation is the process where the bacterial culture is spread as a thin layer in the middle of the clean grease free glass slide. 
it's a process where you spread the microbial cells as a thin layer over the microscopic slide now after you prepare the thin smear so that is the first step after the smear preparation the next step that is followed will be heat fixation it is the process by which the cells are adhered to the slide by means of heat so here this is done by the process of passing the slide over the flame two or three times when you do this cells will be adhering to the microscopic slide so after which you have to add the stain for example crystal violet so here any uh, stain can be used either you can go for using crystal violet or methylene blue so the time duration will be approximately around 1 minute you have to add the stain crystal violet to the smear and leave it on as such so after 1 minute you have to wash with the tap water so the excess stain is removed by the process of washing it with the tap water after you wash it with the tap water now it is blot dry you are drying the slide and after which you can observe it under the microscope on doing it when you observe it under the microscope you will be able to see the size whether they are we will be able to see the accurate shape of the microbial cells for example whether they are rod or cocci can be visualized by this particular technique so i think all of you are clear with the simple staining now let us see about the differential staining process and in that let us see about the gram staining in detail differential staining is a process in which where more than one stain is being used so in the previous thing we have seen about the simple staining where by use of a single stain how do we visualize the stain now in the case of differential staining as from the name you can understand it helps to differentiate the bacteria into two major types so as from the name you can understand this particular staining technique differentiates the bacteria into two major groups for example this gram staining it divides the bacteria as gram positive and gram negative so this acid first staining if you take it divides the bacteria into two major groups as acid first and non acid first we are going to see in detail about the gram staining so how far this gram staining is important it is considered to be one of the very important technique in bacteriology because it is a staining technique which divides the bacteria into two major groups as gram positive and gram negative so we all know that they are the two major groups of bacteria that is gram positive and gram negative so now to see about the property or what base stays as a basis for the differentiation as gram positive or gram negative yes it is a cell wall which differentiates the bacteria into two major groups as gram positive and gram negative so here if you see to the gram positive bacteria it will have the thick peptidoglycan layer it means their cell wall we all know that the bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan and that peptidoglycan layer is thick in the case of gram positive bacteria and also it is thin in the case of gram negative bacteria now let us see how the stains are being added here so we have seen already in the case of differential staining we go for using many staining reagents so first staining reagent that is used is called as a primary stain so why do we call it as a primary stain or what is the purpose of this primary stain the primary stain is the first stain that is used for to your smear so as usual here also the first process will be the smear preparation it is one of the important step in the staining technique after you go for preparing the smear it should be heat fixed why do we go for heat fixation if heat fixation is not done the cells will not be adhered to the slide so after the process of heat fixation we go for adding this primary stain 
what is the purpose of this primary stain its purpose is to impart the color to all the cells irrespective of gram positive and gram negative this color will be taken up by all the cells in the slide so what is the primary stain we add here this primary stain will be crystal violet the time duration will be approximately around 1 minute so after you flood the slide with the stain it is left for 1 minute so at this stage irrespective of either it is gram positive or gram negative all the cells will be appearing purple in color now the second stain we go for adding will be mordant what is the role of this mordant mordant is actually a fixative or it enhances the color fixation so here the mordant will be grams iodin so here also after you add this grams iodin it fixes the color to the cells to all the cells so now at this stage this crystal violet will be reacting with the gram iodin and then it forms cvi complex which is considered to be one of the important step in the gram staining process so what is the cvi complex crystal violet iodine complex it is considered to be one of the important staining process so in the stage 2 you can see that all the gram positive and gram negative cells will be forming the cvi complex so now the third staining reagent that we add is so for the gram iodine also the time duration will be 1 minute after adding crystal violet you go for washing this slide then you add this gram iodine for 1 minute after which you will be washing this slide next we go for adding the decolorizing agent so the decolorizing agent will be ethyl alcohol Ninety percentage ethyl alcohol will be added here. So when you go for adding the ethyl alcohol, as from the name you can understand, it decolorizes. It should be added on to the slide until it washes away all the stain. Now at this stage, this decolorizing agent or ethyl alcohol has got two important layer, two important functions. It will dissolve the lipid. It will act as a lipid solvent. You know that it will act as a lipid solvent. It washes out or it removes the lipid content which is present in the cell wall. And when you compare with these two bacteria, gram negative will have higher lipid content than that of the gram positive bacteria. And when you add this decolorizing agent, when this ethyl alcohol is added to the cell, it washes away or it removes the lipids. so when this in the case of gram positive bacteria the lipid content will be less so as such there will not be any pores that is formed in the cell but whereas here you can see when this ethyl alcohol is added in the case of gram negative the cvi complex which is formed will be washed away because the lipid content is found to be high in the case of gram negative bacteria see since this ethanol or ethyl alcohol washes away all the lipids the pore size will be high and this formed cvi complex will be washed away and hence it will be appearing colorless so it is one of the important step at this stage the gram negative bacteria will be appearing colorless and gram positive bacteria will be appearing in purple color gram positive will be appearing purple in color next the final reagent that is added will be counter stain so here what is the role of the counter stain it will stain the cells at this stage we all know that the gram positive will be purple in color and the gram negative will be colorless so when you add this counter stain counter stain will be safranin after washing the slides with decolorizing agent when you go for adding this safranin for the time duration of 1 minute the cells will be taking up the color of pink that is a saffron in color pink 
So, at this stage the gram positive cells which is retaining the CVI complex will be appearing purple in color and whereas where in the case of gram negative where the CVI complex is washed away by the ethyl alcohol will be taking up the counter stain and will be appearing pink in color. That is why you can see when you do the gram staining this gram positive will be appearing in purple color and also this gram negative also will be appearing in pink color. So, when you are doing the staining you will be able to observe the shape and also whether you will be able to identify whether it is gram positive or gram negative. So, towards the end you can identify whether it is gram positive rod or gram positive cocci or it is gram negative rod or cocci. Hope all of you are clear uh, with this uh, lecture about the topic on staining. As we have clearly stained what we have seen, what a stain is, what does it consist of, how does is it is imparting the color to the cellular components and also we have seen the various type of staining techniques and we have seen in detail about the gram staining. Thank you.